Hello again. Picking up from the last clip, we've been talking about the concepts of supporting pages and how they work and how they blend in visually um, because of the way we and security-wise because of the way we pass in the parameters for the page and the module and whatever else we happen to need for our given feature. So going back to where we're working, so that module control that we can kind of put anywhere on a content management system page is what we call the entry point to the feature. Okay, so in the forums, the entry point is the list of forums and the search thing. That's the mo that's the forums module control. And in our guest book, we've got our guestbook on the page and right now it doesn't do anything but we've established the entry point to our feature and now we can start building our guestbook and adding what we need to make that be a guestbook. Now what you get from the site module what we inherited from in our user control was site module control and that's what associates a module ID and a module good uh, with your feature instance and that's what makes it a able to have instances. So, you know, it might not really be needed in, say, a guest book feature to have more than one guest book per site. You know, you probably wouldn't do that unless you had different sections of the site that were kind of representing different people uh, or something like that. But we're going to build it that way anyway, just because for many features, that's what you want. Like, you know, the HTML feature is the one most commonly used in module portal. So you've got tons of instances of that. You can create instances of any feature and in general that's something you probably want to do. Like I say, this might be an edge case guestbook. You might create just one of the site probably, but we will make it where it supports two. Now, it, it automatically kind of added this edit link when we, and that's just where we generated the code. And this is uh, the module title control in here and it provides a way to uh, automatically have a link to settings. Now we haven't created any custom settings yet, so if we go in there, there's nothing extra in there. There's just the general stuff that goes with every module. Um, and it it created this edit link. We can remove that right now. We don't even have an edit page, but for instance, in the HTML feature, that would just link to the edit page. And again, the title control is designed where you can tell it to Earl, and we can see that right here. Now we did not establish the module ID and page ID in here. Um, this was the code generated from our, our CodeSmith. But what it did, if you notice, is it appended the page ID and the module ID so that it helps us uh, you know, manage our link there. Now within the feature itself, like in the forums, you know, we're responsible for creating our own links and making sure we do that. But the title control does have a handy link to that. Now, in a guestbook situation, I don't know what we would have for the edit link, um, unless we want to, you know, have a special grid where you can delete guestbook entries that maybe got spammed in or something. But we're going to want a form right here on the page, on the module, where people can submit their guestbook entry. And perhaps we want a list of them. Now, that list could grow. We could make it pageable, or we could maybe just show the most recent guestbook entries and have a link to a supporting page where people could page through all the guestbook entries. And probably that's what we'll do just for demonstration purposes in building this feature. Now, another thing I thought I would like to cover, when we put a feature on a page, you know, this feature is going to do post back, right? We're going to submit a form with the guestbooks information. And when you, you, you always have to remember that your feature can live on a page with other feature instances. We could put a, you know, a calendar over here or a blog or whatever. It might not be alone on a page. So you have to be aware of that when you're building it, that when you do a post back, how does that affect the rest of the page? You know, because there's going to be logic in other features like, you know, if it's not a post back, then render this because they're managing their own internal post back things. There's really two strategies because you, you basically want to not be in post back. Once you've done a full post back, if the user clicks the refresh button, it, it posts again. So one strategy is after you handle your post back, you just do a response.redirect to request.rural, and that just kind of gets you back to a get request on the same page. That's one way. Another way is to use an AJAX update panel or, or some kind of method like that so that you're not really doing a, a full post back and it's not really impacting other features on the page. And probably that's what we'll do in the guest book. It seems like a reasonable approach.